This episode of Hatcher Hockey is brought to you by LaSalle Lawn Equipment. It's your one-stop shop for all your lawn equipment maintenance, from tune-ups to general repairs for lawnmowers, snowblowers, chainsaws, and gas trimmers. They offer free diagnosis and estimates as well. Last but not least, you can simply order parts from them too. LaSalle Lawn Equipment is located at 1929 Provincial Road in Windsor. You can reach them at 519-256-3928. And what is going on, everybody out there? All of you buttes and beauties. It is episode number 83 of Hat Trick Hockey, which is always brought to you by our good friends over at GL Heritage, the official beer of Hat Trick Hockey. This being episode number 83, it's the Alice Hemsky edition of Hat Trick Hockey. He's played 15 seasons in the NHL, 845 games, 174 goals, 398 assists, 572 points. He's a World Cup gold medalist. He's a Olympic and World Cup bronze medalist. And he's also won a ship over in the Czech League as well. Not a bad career there for Alice. We'll give a uh, bring in my boy, my line mate, Rob. Rob, kept me a little busy this morning already. It's okay, though. You're set up. <laughs> All good. What's up, dude? I think it's Alice Hemsky. Alice? I don't know. Alice? I'm, it's I'm, not Alice. I'm it's calling Alice. Alice. I'm, Dash I'm, I'm, guess what? He's Alice in my book. Dash one. <laughs> <laughs> so what's up? Uh, I'm lit. <laughs> I'm lit and... Uh, you, you know, life's good. Life's good. <laughs> life life's is good. good. I, I got I got a bunch of beauties in my my life, you know, like uh thinking about it right now, uh you being one of them. Yeah. Uh come pick me up, grab the TV from Carmen. Like figure it out, bro. We got it. Yeah, yeah. No. And, and, and it's just, and life just keeps getting better for me, you know, but here, here's the funny thing today. So, uh, I wake up this morning, I'm late for work. Yeah. So that's I'm like, holy fuck. I go in, I storm in to Glenn's room, <laughs> shake the bed, bro, dude, you got to get up. Like right. you're late for school. He's like, it's Sunday. Yeah, that's not good. Like, I'm fuck. like, what? All right. This proceed. is the greatest day of my life. Yeah. <laughs> proceed. <laughs> right, right. That's fine. So uh, I'm getting rid of my TV. I'm going to have a total beaut and beauty coming over. Yeah. Uh, Dale Flood yeah. and Patty, mm. like, they're just, I, I, I'm i head over heels for these two because. Uh, and they're, for everybody, they're one of the greatest couples I've ever met in my entire life. And so, for everybody wondering, that's former guest on the show, Dale Flood, right? Right, hundred okay. percent. Yeah. Okay, I thought so. What up, Dale? <laughs> right. By the way, but um, yeah, man. Other than that, yeah. So you and then now you have another flat screen coming too this this afternoon, right? Yeah, so I gotta go. You're pick gonna it be up, fucking. Uh, you're you're gonna be all set up. I'm never leaving the house. Fucking beautiful. Hey, did we announce our, where our merch was going yet? I don't think we did, did we? We kind of touched we, on we it. We just said that it was coming to town, right? Right. Okay, so everybody, now we can finally tell you. Um, our merch store is going to be at Accurate Creations in town right there, right next door to the CIBC Bank. Okay, so we're going to move our stuff there. It's going to be close to us, so we can, we've already... There should be a store up, I'm hoping, like within the week. We'll probably have a store up online for you guys. Doesn't matter where you are in the world. If you pay the shipping, we will get it to you. Easy as that. Okay. So um, I know for Canada, like standard shipping cost is usually like 10 or $15 or something like that. So it's not horrible. So what you can do is if you just get multiple items in the store and then it's worth it. Right. So. Look for that. Right. It, 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 if you do call, call me, I'll, I'll drop it off. Yeah. I, I don't care. Well, that's the part like, too. But, but remember we're, we're, we're 20 minutes from everywhere. Yeah. Essex is 20 yeah. minutes from everywhere. Yeah. But if you don't want to come out, we'll ship it to you. Yeah. 
Like, you know what yeah. I mean? It doesn't matter I'll where you are. And, and thanks to Uncle Wayne. Yes, Miller. Uncle Wayne. Yeah, Uncle Wayne and staff there have been fantastic with him. I literally, I was up super late last night. I sent them 17 emails so of stuff and just of shirt designs and stuff like that. We have a whole new line of shirts coming out. Did you uh, send them the rock jersey one? Yes, Rob. Okay. Everything is. I'm just making sure everything because remember. Taken, everything this is was, taken care this of. This was Grace's idea. I know, but I found the logo that you wanted to oh fuck yeah i did find it it's fucking beauty i did find it i did find it so i sent it so there's going to be actually two styles of that rock style so one of them is going to be our logo and then the other one's going to be those letters and check out the hats we're gonna have because we're gonna fucking we're gonna rock shit out so we're gonna we're gonna have hats we're gonna have hoodies we're gonna have shirts we're gonna have fucking everything in the summer we're gonna look we're gonna maybe do some golf shirts as well in the summertime like embroidered golf shirts like nice golf shirts uh we're gonna do that so yeah we we got some shit coming out so check it out it'll be out as soon as i get a link for it i will throw it up on the page and all you beauts and beauties will be it'll be ready for everybody to buy stuff so can't wait i'm excited for this so me too me too that being said I'm back to hockey today too. So that's good. I'm excited. I'm pumped. Can't wait. Hopefully the boys can snap a fucking losing streak here. Mix in a win here, fellas. Jesus. Um, all right. So should we just hop on or what? See what's going on here in the NHL. Okay. But, but before we get going with that, um, so I, uh, Lou mm-hmm. Jordan, uh, mm-hmm. hooked me up with Snapchat. Oh so my. now I'm on the Snapchat. I Rob's on the Snapchat. I don't know how to use it. I'm not very good at it. But that being said, I'm on a chat with Joe, Lou, and Pumps. Yeah. And Pumps uh, snapped us from Germany yeah. last night. <laughs> and it was awesome. Like, I got to meet the cook. <laughs> You know, and, and he's funny. like, they hooked us up with prime rib and blah, 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 whatever. Like, mm. and uh, the waitress that he introduced us to, Rocket. Mm. Okay. Yeah. That being said, it was just awesome. And I said, I said, hey, you need to uh, get them to come to a Meg meeting. <laughs> and uh, the cook said, you come here first. <laughs> Of course. <laughs> so it, it, was, it was so much fun. Like it, it was just, it was just great. And pumps. I know you listen to the show. You got to come on again, bro. We need an update from you. God. <laughs> but yeah, I'm sure that's going to be actually a lot's happened for him since we've talked last too. So yeah, it's going to be a good epi when, once we get him on with us, once we can track and him down. All, He's honestly, busy though. I, I know he is. Pumps, I'm talking with you pumps. I, I think that pumps could have went to the Olympics for Team Canada, mm-hmm. but that being said, uh, their team wasn't giving anybody up. No. Uh, the league, I think, uh, how it went was uh, nobody's, oh. nobody's. That sucks, though, because that's a good opportunity for them. Fuck. I, I would have quit Germany just to go to the Olympics. But yeah, yeah, but they're probably paying them pretty good. So he doesn't. Yeah, they are. That's what, <laughs> that's what I mean. Yeah, they're sh- they're shutting down bars. No, I know. Oh yeah, there, like, that's that's perfect. Yeah, pumps is doing pumps things. <laughs> that's what he's doing. Yeah. So, but pump soon. Need you on here, kid. Um, I'll get him. So. NHL, it was all All Star Weekend this past weekend. There's a couple of the highlights that Rob and I are going to talk about here. One of them, did you see the Zegra shootout where he was like blindfolded and shit? Yeah, I did. did. That? Well, he could see through that. I'm, I'm thinking he could have too, but still, for but sure. That's... Because when, he, when when after he scored, he didn't when run he in was that backwards. He looked over his shoulder and he saw the the cameraman uh, yeah. or women uh, behind him. Uh, so. Yeah. Still a hell of a okay. move. It, it was sick. That yeah. was a sick. How how he kept that puck on his stick was yeah. unreal. It's crazy. Um, yeah. Headman won the won the hardest shot. He shot one hundred and three point two. So rocket. You said Aho went four for four in the accuracy shooting. Yep. Right. That's just nuts, man. That t- that's so much talent to do that. 
Uh, just but, crazy. Uh, Pumps could have done it. I could. Yeah. Done it. Um. Yeah. What is it? Kairu won the fastest skater. If that's not how I how you say his name, dash two, whatever. But from St. Louis, won the fastest skater. Uh, there was a blackjack. I'm a dead stop, Larkin. Yeah. A. There was I a. Remember, Mike Gartner. Held listen, that you're just. For you. Years. I know, but you're just hating on it right now because Larkin's a wing and the guy who held it was a leaf. <laughs> Larkin started at the red line. They all do. Or the blue line, sorry. Larkin started at the blue line and got a running start at it. So don't fucking don't give me I didn't that. watch it. Rob, next time we're on the ice, you're doing a lap. I want to see it. <laughs> oh, I'll wheel. I'll, wheel. I'll, <laughs> I'll fucking go drag it too. Backwards. I, I would pay to see it. Um, and then they did that. Uh, fucking shoot out there with all the cards there right yeah so, so i wanted shootout. to say something about that i i think they should have did best poker hand because um who mm-hmm. didn't get to shoot last uh um i think was it, it was, was i it think Brady? it was uh matthews and Kadri. Oh, okay so they didn't even get to shoot last like why wouldn't mm-hmm. you just go best hand five card stud yeah. That would have been sick. But instead, like, two guys didn't get to shoot because all the aces were gone, all the kings were gone. Yeah, that's crazy. So, yeah, I, I thought it was kind of a shitty... Yeah. When it come to the actual All-Star game, the Metro won it. And uh, Claude Giroux was All-Star game MVP. Nice. So, But I still... Didn't... I am still 100% on the girls being able to play in that all-star game. Yeah. Like, yeah, why not sure. Why not put 20 out there and be uh, girls and guys? I like Pick what your they team, do. team, last pick, still gets a car. Not that they need it, but. I like what they did prior. But the reason why they didn't have anything with the girls this year is because they're all at the olympics right now right right but i'm saying any other year though i liked what they did canada u.s like that that was fucking awesome it was awesome like, but you could have still done it you could have still yeah. there could have still been other girls that didn't make the olympic team and you could have still rolled with no, it no i know you want to support we want to support the girls hockey too right yeah but so but why would you, so why wouldn't you put the best of the best out on the ice three out of four years because they're at the olympics I know. That's why you do it three out of four years. You do Canada versus U.S. So like that. I was fucking. They were the best part of the weekend last time. Right, right. But 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 I'm saying let them play with the the guys. Yeah, I know. But the NHL might not want that though. Why? Because there's hitting. There no. isn't. No, just I don't know injuries and shit. Maybe like I don't know. Nope. I don't know. But I, I you might see it one day. Who knows? Maybe. Well, they, I think possibly. they should listen to me. Possibly. <laughs> That's why we're not running the NHL and it's Uncle Gary's running the fucking well, NHL. <laughs> He's a Muppet. But anyways, so moving on. 2023, the Winter Classic is headed to Fenway. So it's going to be the Bees. The Bees are going to play somebody. If you could pick for them to play somebody at Fenway Park, who would you pick Boston to play? New York. New York? Yeah, yeah that, that wouldn't be a bad one. I would think I'd like to see Boston and Philly outdoor or Detroit. Like let, let's Detroit, let's Boston. Go, let's yeah. go an OG. Let's go an OG. Yeah. Toronto. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like original six matchup. Yeah. It's gotta yeah. be an OG. Not, not, but it, the Rangers will do cool, something like stupid just to, uh, yeah. Get, get ticket sales and they'll drop it in uh fucking, what uh, they need to do is play do a team. It, uh, uh, Arizona. They you need know to. What I mean? like, they need on. to play a team that in the Winter Classic that hasn't played one yet. Like that's so, the point. So they, no. they need to fucking get teams in there playing the, these games who haven't played them. Like the Blackhawks have played in multiple. The Red Wings have played in multiple. Um, like you know what I mean. Like get different teams in there playing. People want to see different teams play the Winter Classic. Put one one year, put it in fucking California one year. You know what I mean? Like, put it in fucking, put it all over the league. Too hot. Too hot in California. Can't they've, ar- do it. they've already had a game in California. Uh, 
at Dodger Stadium. The Ducks and Kings played there one time. It's pretty mm-hmm. sweet, dude. It was awesome. Um, so look for that 2023 Fenway Park. Um, the NHL trade deadline's coming up. So then some of the names that they're saying is on the block are Mark Andre Fleury, of course, Claude Giroux, Kessel. Um, just a couple of the names on the list. Who do you do you think any of those guys will be on the move? I could see Fleury maybe going somewhere for sure. I think yeah. all three of them will be on you the think, move. Yeah. I think uh, Giroux will get traded and end up back. Oh, there. like they'll just trade him away to – for a run at a cup or something. And why not get a first round draft pick out of it? But if they know that he's coming back though, and the other team knows that too, that they're trading, they might not go for that trade because they might. Yeah, but they're going to, they're going to have to eat a chunk of his salary just to get him to go. You know what I mean? Yeah, like be about probably, yeah, uh, probably. Because with, with, with Drew, I heard Toronto was in the. Uh, Toronto world. is in on him yet, but Toronto's going to have to give up. Because Toronto right. doesn't have cap space, man. And they don't have first round draft picks. I know. So that's what so I mean. So they're gonna have gonna to give do? up, they're gonna have to give up NHL ready. Is what so here's where I'm back to um, you know, Sidney Crosby giving up money for Malkin to stay. Now we're looking at Malkin giving up money for Latang to stay. You know, think about it. If those big Toronto's five, gotta if you want to win a cup, you're not you're not ready. Yeah, those big five go in there, restructure your deal. Right, you know what I mean. And free up some money. If they all freed up a million to a million and a half out of their deals in total, that that would give them like six seven million dollars probably to fucking work to find to get free agents or sign people or fucking. And then you, you know, get, and then you get flurry. You can get. You will win a cup. You, you could win a cup with flurry in net. You could get three guys at a couple million dollars a piece. You could get two guys at three million dollars a piece. Like, you know what I mean? There's that's a yeah. you, you could get a good players for that, especially on yeah. a rental basis or on a one year deal. Like, you could get a good guy for a fucking few million bucks. Well, Toronto's got to, these guys got to stop being so fucking like Richie's so making. Richie's why why making do you think a half. they got him uh, on the minus. Hyman didn't stay? No, I know. Because they couldn't afford them. Yeah, I know. Because these fucking assholes are just raping. Yeah, I know. It's raping. Crazy. It's crazy, dude. Yeah. Like, like I wish Glenn Saylor was the general manager of the Toronto Maple Leafs. Because <laughs> at one time, he came into the room and grabbed everybody. Wayne Gretzky, Mark Messier, you know, like, they're fucking... Top dogs, yeah. Right. And said, listen... You want to be a dynasty? This is how we have to do it. Yeah, you got to give a little to get a little. And everybody took a pay cut. Everybody, you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. Lidstrom did it so they could sign Datsuk or Zetterberg. I forget which one, but Lidstrom took a cut. Iserman took a cut too. Iserman took a cut so Fedorov could stay. Mm-hmm. And he still had more points than him every year. Yeah. That's you know what, what I mean? like, that's that's like, what a captain use does, your head. man. Use that's your what head. A, that's that. Eh? That's what a captain does, right? A good captain, especially so now, one that's. But he made his money too, right? He's probably like, listen, I got tons of money. Like, what's a couple million bucks to fucking be able to sign somebody? Like, right? Or I'm gonna win a cup and make yeah. a million bucks. Sure. Yeah, I'm gonna make that. Cup. Yeah, I'm gonna make that back four on, times. Yeah, I'm gonna make four it back times. on the fucking back end, anyways. Because yeah, right. I think you get a like right. a million dollar bonus or something like that if you win the cup. I know there's some sort of bonus. I yeah, forget I'm what pretty it sure is, it's but, a million bucks. But still, yeah, you would make it again when you win the cup. So, right. Yeah, but I don't know. We'll see. Um, in the meantime, we do have some things to talk about on the back half. We should probably flip it over to our interview, eh? This fucking guy. The guys, this interview. So last time, so we got the sheriff back on with us. So he, uh, last time he was in, we talked about a bunch of his stuff when he was growing up and he got into some shit or whatever, spent some time in jail. We talked about all that, blah, blah, blah. So, but this time when he came on, we talked like, we talked all of his like pro career, some of his like OHL stuff with the hunters and stuff like that. Um, we talked about the Subban incident. You guys will hear it. it was, this was, we had a great chat with him. 
Like it was fucking fantastic. So I'm just going to shut up and just turn it over to the interview. So everybody enjoy the sheriff, Sean McMorrow. One of my favorite people in the world. Roll it. No time. Woo! 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 Well, ladies and gentlemen, we want to welcome back again for round two. Had to get this cat back in with us. Former OHLer, AHLer, Sabres draft pick. You can now actually catch him on his podcast, Sheriff Podcast, where he's been absolutely killing it there, doing fantastic. Let's welcome back to the show our boy, Sheriff Sean McMorrow. What's up, man? How's it going? What's going on, guys? Thanks for having me back on. I'm super, super excited to talk to you fine gentlemen. Fuck, it took forever for you just to come on the show, right? (laughs) Yeah, What's so a couple off, technical difficulties. Yeah, so off the hop. I know we're gonna have to send in over there and get y'all sorted out because he does it for me. So like, <laughs> I know. Half the time I wouldn't even be on this show. He didn't come down. <laughs> That's hilarious, man, dude. Very so nice. what's up, man? Not too much, man. I mean, you know, the holidays just kind of passed, and you know, we're living in this exciting COVID world right, right now where we're able to do so many things. I mean, I'm just, obviously I'm being sarcastic, but mm-hmm. um, on the bright side, this past Monday in Ontario, everything kind of opened up as far as like restaurants and businesses. And I was able to uh, visit the hockey hall of fame with my brother-in-law slash mm-hmm. producer, Danny Granger. Yeah. I That's seen awesome. that. I was like, look at these guys with the cup and everything staying next to the cup, big old smile on your face. I'm like, look at this guy. Did you it get was, a chance to do the really, uh, hockey really fun, shoot? Man. What, Rob? Did, you, did I do a did hockey you, shoot? Yeah, did you get the chance to do that, uh, the net and uh, the nine squares? Oh, yeah, dude. Yes, I did. I I shot on on um, Carey Price. Yeah. And, you know, the, like the, the digital Carey Price. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'm telling you, man, I scored a couple goals, but I had to wait a couple seconds because the goalie's supposed to get reset. So I know I beat Carey Price, but it didn't <laughs> count on the scoreboard. <laughs> <laughs> Always a story to tell, eh? <laughs> That's funny, man. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I see you, though, man. You've been putting out, like, so much content and stuff lately. You've had tons of crazy guests. We've had a few guests in, in common as of late. Yeah. Like Mr. Ryan, Perry Ryan, absolute animal, that guy, eh? Yeah, man. I mean, Terry, man, I'm, I'm so glad that I've met that guy in the past little while. And, you know, I've, he came on my show. I've been on his show, but dude, I'm telling you, man, that guy is probably one of the most underrated characters in hockey. He, as we were talking about before the recording, his show on, on my podcast is now rated number one. I know you guys recorded recently with him too. Mm-hmm. Terry Ryan is on the rise and we're, we're, we're just happy to be on the Terry Ryan uh, uh, yeah. train, just like you guys. Yeah. Yeah, man. I jumped, we jumped on that bandwagon for sure. Oh yeah. yeah. He's a he's great, great dude. Dude. He said too, he gets so many messages and stuff too. Eh? Like he said, it is insane how many messages he gets. Yeah, I mean, he's he's like, I mean, he's like a triple threat, dude. Like, like the guy's a talker. Like, obviously, we all know that, right? He's <laughs> one of the best storytellers like I've ever heard. And then the yeah. guy's like an actor, and you know, he's he's getting into like producing now. And you know, the guy is a very, very interesting fella. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and like you, he's well spoken. Like, I, I love listening to your show, Sean. Like, it, it, it's awesome. Um, but you, you guys are the nicest meanest motherfuckers that ever played a game yeah you know like i i just i and how you give back to like for us and to to our fans like it's just awesome that you know you guys you guys take the time out of your busy days and schedules and all that and uh you know what i mean help help little guys like us out well i mean I, and i appreciate you saying that dude but like as you guys know um what i'm realizing now is that I mean, there's a lot of shows out there, right? There's a lot of podcasts, especially since the pandemic hit. Mm -hmm. A lot of people jumped on it, which was a very smart thing to do because everyone was home and people had more time to access things like podcasts. Mm -hmm. So the reality is, is there's a bunch of us out there. Some of us are going to do well. Some of us aren't going to do as well. The point is, is that if we all work together, there's so much that we can accomplish on our platforms. Yeah. How we do with our personal shows 
personally, we're going to all have to deal with that like personally, right? But if we can all work together, no matter where we are on the ratings or anything else, I'm telling you, so many things can get done. You know, working with guys like Gooch, uh, Kerry Goulet, you know, that guy's a guy that's kind of getting to the end of his time. He's in his mid sixties now, and yeah. he wants to put together an alliance and then leave and feel good about it, that he was able to put something together before he's done. And I know guys like you guys like myself, like we want to be a part of those movements. So yeah, yeah man, I'll come on anytime guys. And you guys yeah. are, you guys are welcome on my show too. Awesome. Dude, dude, this is that. yeah. I was saying to Rob too. I was like, man, I was like, I felt like we barely scratched the surface the last time we had you on. Like, I know we talked about like when you were younger and your like OHL days, which Rob still has a few questions on that, which we'll be at those in a second. And like we talked about your jail sentence, like we talked about so much shit last time. And I'm like, after we got off the air, I was like, Rob, like we have to have him on again because we didn't even talk any of his pro career <laughs> like you know what i mean we talked nothing your pro career so but rob before we go you said you had a couple things that you wanted to ask him about like london and stuff right yeah well you you, you played with rick nash like what, what was that like playing with that stud so rick nash was the guy that was the underage pick the the, the year that i got traded away from from london Okay, so Rick Nash and Corey Perry were, were actually both on the team and they were both like 16 year olds, skinny, you know, tall, skinny and, and wiry, right? You knew right. that they were going to be really good players. Mm -hmm. But man, when I was with them, they were so young that they hadn't really turned that curve yet, that they weren't drafted yet. They were, they, no one really knew about them yet. They were just highly touted OHL prospects, right? right. But man, did they have something special? They had that fire in their eye. I, I knew they were going to be like amazing players in the future. Mm -hmm. right. and then, yeah. And then it was like, anybody even goes near those guys, you're fucking dealing with me. That's what it is. I, like, well, yeah. I mean, that, <laughs> that kind of gave me, I mean, those guys helped me when I was on London because the fact that they were such upcoming stars the Hunter brothers really looked at my position as very important because they're like, yeah, well, you know, Sean's here to protect our young star, uh, our, our young stars. And, yeah. and, you know, so that makes Sean important too. Right. So, right. so that kind of really helped me um, for my value, especially towards the end of that year when they ended up trading me to Oshawa so I could start get some ice time start proving that I could play. Right. Yeah. Now, now, how does it come about that you end up like, do, does the coach say, listen, this is what your role is going to be. You need to protect these guys. Is, is, is that how that goes? Or did you just start doing it and, They're you know, just it just went from there? Well, I mean, as far as far as the fighting in general, um, it was it was the league before the OHL, the junior A, uh, Ontario Provincial Junior A League, where I played for the Pickering Panthers. That's when the half visors first started coming into effect, you know, from Bantam being the full cages. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, there was a spot on the team for a guy to do that. And then I don't know if we kind of got into, into this talking point last time, but for me, it was kind of like, I was a big defenseman. I was a rookie. There wasn't a guy that was a designated fighter on the team. I stepped up early in the season, won my first fight. My fifth fight won my fifth fight. My 10th fight won my 10th fight. You guys can see how the pattern's going. Right. So for me, I was just really successful. And I was like, wow, I'm really good at this. This can help me get to where I want to go. Right. So I kind of embraced having, because because it's not necessarily that, okay, you're there to protect this guy. But what the rule is, is that, okay, you are the guy that's going to go if there's going to be a fight. You're yeah, the guy yeah. and you have to embrace that. And the sooner you can accept that and, and look at it as a sport and not, you know, if you lose a fight, get go into a deep depression and you play bad for the next five days. Like once you're able to accept that whole role, the, 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 the better it's going to be for you moving forward. You have to think too, though, like, especially at that age, like, you're what 17 18 years old in the o, yep. like that's a lot of pressure to put on a kid knowing that you're going into all these cities and the toughest kid on that team is there waiting for you it's nerve-wracking and the thing is is that the tough guys like for some reason like especially in that ontario provincial league they all seem to be like 20 year olds or overagers yeah. or like you know like like you go into a place like coburg or trenton you know or Lindsay. 
you know, these are small Ontario towns, like farming communities, the big farm boys, there, bales of hay your whole life. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like I have cousins that, that are from those areas and, and man, it seemed like their tough guy was just this big farm kid that was 21 years old, looked like he was 31. Yeah. And here I am this 16, just turning 17, you know, straight playing Bantam the year before for the yeah. Don Mills Flyers, you know, having to work myself up to be able to take on this 21 year old in Lindsay in, a, yeah. in an arena that's packed with 2000 people and in an old school barn, right? Like I'm just trying to describe it yeah. as best that I can. But yeah, I mean, it was nerve wracking, but I just was able to kind of build those nerves to be stronger and stronger, mentally tougher, and just kept the role going on in my career. That's crazy. So, so now, Sean, like in, in your day, when you were playing and you were in, in, in the heat of it all, were you going in knowing that you were going to fight the tough guy or were you waiting for somebody to do something to your skill players that now you have to step up and, and they have to answer the bell. And then it's, I'm fighting their tough guy now. Yeah. Like how, how did that all work out? Did you know going in, you were fighting the tough guy or did you wait for something to happen? Um, I, I, most of the times I knew that I was going to do it. Um, there'd be stat packs that would be in the dressing rooms before the game. You'd be able to see, you'd be able to go down the list, see who had the most penalty minutes on the other team. Um, once you reached like, uh, well, once you reach pro, it actually breaks it down to like the league leaders and fighting majors. And you can look at the other team and see how many majors every, every player had. And like, it would break it down the stats pretty good. Um, as a young guy, as a guy that wanted to, to make this out of my career, as a guy that was starting to realize that this is what I'm going to have to do if I'm going to play in the NHL, I, like I said, I, I embraced it to the point where I wanted to make a point that I'm the guy and I would try to get a fight, I guess, in, in, in a, a, way to explain, a, a way to explain it is out of the way in the first period, mm. just to like, okay, like, let's say we're going into one of those towns. There's a 20 year old that has, 250 penalty minutes he's obviously the guy once we get out together in the first period let's me go. being a hungry rookie yeah. i'm gonna give him a whack and say hey let's go you know what i mean just the, right. like like i know central scouting's probably there i'm like i'm wanting to go to the ohl like you know what i mean like all these things are on my mind that i'm thinking if i can fight this guy while i have a lot of energy it's the first period and if i do well then i don't have to worry about him anymore and i can just mm. play the rest of the game i prove to everyone that i can do it if something happens in the second, third period, so be it. But at least I have it out of the way. I got the stat. I'm showing my team that I showed up today. And now I can concentrate on playing the best game that I can play. And that's how complicated it was for the tough guys back in the day. That's crazy, man. That's the great thing about back then. You could fight and still be in the game. Now you're yeah. gone. Yeah. So that role will never take place anymore you know what i mean that you you don't have a guy making the nhl just because he's tough you have to have all the tools now yes exactly and and that's like i mean i've had guys um on my show like tony twist for example yeah. where i'm hearing awesome tony guy. twist stories oh yeah i'm hearing i'm hearing tony twist stories of how he would prepare and what it was like to have to go into detroit with yeah, pro green kosher yeah, that's right crazy. And, and, and I'm thinking about it and I'm like, man, there's so many, there's so many levels like, like to the role. Right. And like yeah. hearing a guy like that, like, like tell his stories, like I really appreciated even being a, on a, on a lower level, but doing the same thing because right. it's really, it's really insightful to hear what the tough guy actually goes through in his mind. Like Twister was pointing out things like I had to pay attention to when the guy was going to be out next because then I had the time when I was going to go out and maybe I'd look back at the coach and let him know that he was out there. And, and, and I had to, you know, take a sip of water right before I jumped out just to have any type of advantage yeah. over Bob Probert or right. whoever it may be. You know what I mean? Um, the 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 shift. Yeah. 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 So, so it's interesting that there are so many different components to that role. And that's the beauty about talking about it now, guys, because the role literally doesn't really exist anymore, period. So just to know the history of hockey and to know that this existed, you know, I try to point it out as much as I can in my shows just because I had to play it, right? But, yeah. but it's a little bit of a celebration when we, when we sure. talk about, you know, the, the, this, this type, type of our culture of the game, right? Mm -hmm. Well, you, you did a role that doesn't even exist anymore, really, yeah. right? 
Like, and, and you good. think about it too. What I've noticed listening to all the podcasts from Spit and Chicklets to your your sheriff show and uh, our show alone, I've noticed that a lot of these tough guys originally started out as D men. Yeah. You know, yeah. Twister, he was talking about it. I was a D man. They said, You want to make, make the NHL, you're coming up and playing the wing. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Wendell yeah. Clark bro- was drafted as a defenseman. Yeah. One of the toughest, Amazing. best hockey players ever to was play the game. You, same thing, right? You yeah. were a D man. They moved you up. Yep. Fucking Brandon Sugden was a defenseman. Uh, I think Trevor Gillies, he was yeah. a D man too when he was younger. There's, there's a lot of guys. I think even the original sheriff, Scott Parker, mm-hmm. I think he was a D man too. Reed Lowe. Um, there's a bunch of guys. Um, and obviously the reason being is, you know, you're tough at, at that time. They needed guys to fill these roles. So you'd be tough enough to fill a role, but your skating might not be good enough to be a top six defenseman. Right. So what's the solution? Right. We're going to throw them on the wing, on the, on, on the right side, on the left side, uh, on the fourth line. We're going to teach him how to crash and bang. He does. He, he can get in on that four check fast. He can be very effective getting the puck in deep and crashing and banging. And that's going to be his new position. And that's what a lot of guys have to take on. And that's why you see a lot of the tough guys in the nineties and the two thousands were wingers, right? But, but half of them were defensemen growing up through the ranks in junior. Cause as a D man, you don't really get to hit. You get hit more than you get to. Hit. Oh yeah. You know oh yeah. So yes. You got to put him up on the wing and, and he's going to get more, more ice time now. And he's going to, you know, be able to go punish guys and, you being as big as you are, like I imagine. You, well, I seen that one. Uh, call it a dirty hit where you hit that, hit that guy uh, in the UK. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. In the in Cardiff, yeah. Greg, Ad, I think Adams was his name. Yeah, yeah I sideswiped him or something, and there was yeah. some pull. Dirty or no? I, I was, thought it was a hit. Yeah, it was borderline, it was point, right? That was borderline. He says. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> he's on our show, so he's a good guy. We're not going to go that way. It's the other guys that don't come on our show that will shit talk. <laughs> hey, what was the worst freaking, like, I don't know, cut or, or any sort of freaking injury that you got in a fight? Like, worst one you got? So, um, I have a couple bad cuts, lacerations. Um, because of my, my skin complexion, the scars actually take a little while to heal i have one right beside my eye it's actually it's not from a fight it's actually from a skate Ooh. and it was my first training camp in buffalo you guys remember jp dumont yeah he was a, a winger he always would play like his off wing for the sabers and i think he was in chicago for a bit before buffalo and we were in an inner squad game i accidentally tripped him and then fell over top of him and it was just a complete freak accident it wasn't like a kicking motion or anything his skate just literally just touched my face and just you know the impact and the sharpness cut it and i was rushed to the buffalo general and um the reason why i'm telling this story is because that same training camp i played a couple of preseason games and fought chris neal and shane knighty in Buffalo preseason, Ottawa versus Buffalo, two fights in the same game about three days after that cut. And I'm all stitched up and I have a big shiner that I bought those guys. <laughs> you got to do it. I, I look like Goon, like the, yeah, yeah. Like the poster that they used for that yeah. movie with yeah. Douglas Smith. That's what I look like at that time. Hey, um, so, yeah, I mean, the cuts definitely affect the fights. But sometimes when you're cut, you'll do better because you're so, you're so afraid that you're going to get hit in that spot that you just get like superhuman powers for that fight and end Jesus. up protecting it and going extra <laughs> offensive and winning the fight. So <laughs> My God. Uh, a little bit, a little, I want to take a little, I got two, two more questions for junior. You played with Dale Hunter. Yeah. What was what? that like? Cause I loved, I loved, I hated him, but I loved watching him play. Yeah. I was, I was so lucky and blessed to be able to be with the Hunter brothers. Mark Hunter, his brother, drafted me to the league in Sarnia. And then when Mark and Dale got together a couple of years later and bought London, they traded for me. So I already knew the Hunters, but now I get to meet Dale. And Dale's my head coach when I get there. Right. Mark's the GM, Dale's the head coach. Dale was like the ultimate players coach, man. That family is, 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 is like completely different from any family I've ever met. They're the hardest workers. They're the most blue collar. They're so naturally tough. Their whole family is just 
just so into hockey that you just feel blessed being around them because like they're they're like a like a like a fam like a hockey uh royalty family almost right. you know three brothers all play in the nhl all first rounders the, the one brother that doesn't get talked to as much he's the one that won all the stanley cups i mean Damn. mark won one but like it, man they got cups in that family three uh, measure i mean three uncles that play in the nhl like yeah. like it, yeah. it's insane so i mean they made you feel like you were a pro Dale made you feel that he was on the line with you, like when he would talk with you on the bench. And like, yeah, he would just give all these examples of guys that he would play with a lot of Craig Berube stories and Mm -hmm. from Washington. And, you know, he'd be like, you know, you know, Sean chief, what he'd call him chief chief would always do this. And and I found that that when, when, when Berube would would do these plays, it would work for him. And and like, it was just so cool to get that hands on like, um, like suggestions, like from a legend, like Dale Hunter. Right. Mm -hmm. It's incredible. That's awesome because, like, he, like you said, they're they're royalty, and and that those London Knights, the, those teams, they, that's a that's a hockey factory that they're, oh. they're playing. Oh yeah, guys, you know, like so much yeah, experience, dude. so much knowledge. Like it, you, you would be honored to go play for them, even if you were a fourth liner, because you're probably a third liner or a second liner on any other team. Yeah, I, I mean, but but just here's here's just a short story I'm going to tell you. This is what I got to experience when I was in London. Lindsay Hofford was the coach when I first got there. Dale was also there and Mark was also there. Basil McRae, mm-hmm. okay? Yeah. He was like a part owner. So they would all be around. And I remember one afternoon being at Lindsay Hofford's house, watching my fights with Basil McRae, Dale and Mark Hunter. And Basil McRae is, is critiquing my fights from the season before, telling me what I should be doing and what he'd be doing. And like, you don't get that type of no. advice anywhere. Like, right. that's like, that's like, like people could have dreams about those characters and stuff. Yes. And I, one afternoon we were just having lunch and they're, and because they wanted me to be the best. Right. And they, right. they, they really helped me with my, my mindset and with my confidence. And I appreciate London, the hunters, Basil McRae, all of them. That's awesome. Lindsay because Hoffman. like, I used to love watching Toronto and Minnesota when, uh, Wendell and Basil, Basil like it was a given that they were going every yeah. night. Right? Oh yeah, and man, Basil, they Basil. Had some fucking goes. Wasn't he the one that was always going at it with Brad Smith? Wasn't it Basil McRae? Yeah, that, Basil that, McRae. That, man. That he was talking about Brad Smith. He everybody. Time. He didn't care. No, he but didn't. I mean, Brad. Brad said he's like he's like every yeah. time I played this guy we fought because something you, you got to get happen. him on your show Brad Smith he was Brad Smith awesome yeah he was interview. awesome yeah he's great. old yeah, school well, guy he's a Windsor boy right 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 yeah. from this area so that's why I had to get him so we ended up getting him on and it was it, he was just fun just yeah. a fun guy yeah he was funny he had a six stash on him too really yeah. Yeah. He, he he said he had uh, Wendell Clark Majestic. chasing him around the ice. Uh, yeah. Because he pissed him off, <laughs> and then they they didn't end up going. And he's like, "I'd only fight if I got mad." He goes, "I couldn't just fight just to fight." He goes, "I'm not that guy." He goes, "But piss me off, and yeah, we're gonna go." And he goes, "And I fucking I stick Wendell, and Wendell's chasing me around the ice, but I'm not mad about it. He's mad about it." Mm. So we end up going to the bench, and I look down the bench, and Wendell's looking at me, and they both start laughing. Right. <laughs> so it was just one of those stupid, funny stories that. They never end up getting to go. And then he got traded to Toronto and ended up playing for Toronto, which was great. Awesome. Huh? I loved him. I loved him. It's Especially awesome how that works. He had, he almost had the Ron Duguay hair, you know, like yeah. uh, it was always slick back and he was a beauty. Was a beauty. <laughs> Ron Duguay hair. Yeah. What a guy. We always reference great hair with Ron Duguay. Hey, you're, <laughs> I seen a stat that kind of jumped out to me. So you're, I think it was 0203. You were in Rochester, I want to say. Yep. You had 315 penalty minutes. Yeah, that was my first year pro in was the it AHL. Just had anybody who wanted to go, let's go, or what? Well, well, this was the thing. Like, like I okay, Buffalo was such a, a team that culturally had two heavyweights on their roster that it was Rob Ray and Eric Bolton in Buffalo. It was me as a rookie and Andrew Peters in yeah. his third year pro in rochester so we all knew that if the game didn't change that eventually if me and pd if we didn't you know like 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 wander off that we were the next two guys in line Mm -hmm. so i knew this and and i i mean once you're there 
and you know how close you are, you're like, dude, I'm going to do anything I can to get there. So my mindset was I just tried to fight at least once every game. I led the AHL in fighting majors that season. I believe it was either 41 or 43 in those 64 games. This is the AHL. My it was God. the 315 minutes, right? Yeah. But I also earned the, the call up that season to Buffalo against the Toronto Maple Leafs. Like that was my one regular season game. It was March of that season, yeah. right? Because I was leading the league and, you know, Rob Ray just got traded to Ottawa. And, you know, and I think they just rewarded me for having a good rookie season in the American League. Like, I, th that, I think that's what they told me anyway. Yeah. Right. So, yeah, that was my goal. I wanted to lead the league in, in penalty minutes, fights, and like just fight my way up to Buffalo. Like, like that's what you could do in those mm. times. Like, like the, the job was there. Man, I was like, my I can't God. stop smiling on you telling stories just due to the fact that you loved that game. You loved it. Okay, so can you walk us through, uh, you get the call up. What? Where are you? They say, hey, Sean, guess what? You're coming to Toronto. Let's yeah, go. like what, what, walk us through that. Like, where are you? Awesome. Okay, so most guys, I think, get the call up when they're at home. They'll get a phone call and it'll be like in the afternoon or the evening. The other percentage of guys they find out after practice. So they're in the AHL, they have their practice. And so now you have to, you have to picture this. I'm a rookie. I'm a fourth liner. So it's not uncommon for me to have to do extra stuff after practice. Right. Mm -hmm. It's like practice is over. And then like, you Grab know, the coaches will, shit. will bring yeah. like all the fourth liners and the, the sixth and the seventh defensemen. And, you know, and they'll be like, okay, guys, we're going to do some quick feet drills or, oh. you know, you do that for 10 minutes and then you're done. Right. Yeah. So that's like normal when you're at the AHL level. So Cunny, Randy Cunnyworth, he's my coach, mm -hmm. favorite coach I've ever had. Former Ottawa. Randy Center. Cunnyworth Coach is over. He's like, Mac, come, I got to talk to you. So first thing he's like, I got to talk to you. He didn't say we're going to do some drills. I'm like, fuck, have I done anything lately? Am I in trouble? I'm trying to like think like if there's anything I should be worried about. Your head's exploding. I'm like, I'm like, you know what? No, no, I didn't know. I didn't miss any curfews lately or anything. I, I should be okay. So I, I kind of wheel over and I knew something was up because this guy had a weird grin on his face, man. And you know what I mean? And like, yeah. I, I, I like we had a good team that year. So like, you know how it is when you're winning, everyone's always happy and stuff. So, you know, it wasn't too uncommon, but I'm like, something's up, man. This grin is like a little extra big here. <laughs> so I skate up to him. I'm like, Hey, Cuddy, what's going on? So he's leaning on his stick like this, right? He's got his coach's uniform on the gloves, you know, whistle. He's leaning on his, on his, on his knob of his stick. And he's like, he just says it to me. I like, I'll never forget the way he said it. He, he goes, he goes, Mac, you got the call. You're going to the show with a big grin on his face. You were probably like, right? Holy shit. right. So yeah, man. So did I trust me. So <laughs> I was like, at the time, I was kind of like, as a player, you're very competitive. You're always kind of expecting in your own mind, man, they should be calling me up. I'm doing so good. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping to get called up. Why haven't they called me up yet? Like, as an AHL player, right, that's an aspiring NHL player, you're always confident or you shouldn't be there, right? right. So I was expecting to, but you never really know if you're going to get called up. So when I heard those words, it was like, an incredible relief. It's like, oh my God, like this is happening, man. This guy just told me I got called up to the NHL. Like, right. So then after he said that, he's just kind of like, um, you know, just take your time. Um, you know, you're, you're going to have a practice tomorrow in Buffalo. You're going to check into the Marriott hotel tonight in Buffalo. And then you guys have the game in Toronto on Saturday. Yeah. So this was like on a Thursday, this is Thursday after practice. He's like, you're going to practice. You're going to go to Buffalo, stay in Buffalo for a day or two. You guys have a game in Toronto on Saturday. So as soon as he told me that news, I'm like, okay, I think I'm going to get a mulligan for going off straight off the ice today. Cause I'm too excited. I can't do any drills after practice drills today. I'm off. So I go right off. I go to the room where we have our clothes. I find my jeans right away, get my cell phone, jump on the phone. I call my mom first. I'm like, mom, you know, I, I, I just got called up. And then she's like, oh my God, Sean, that's wonderful. You know, uh, who, who are you going to play? And then I'm like, I'm like, I'm, 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 I'm playing Toronto. 
We're, we're playing Toronto tonight. We're, and she lives in Toronto. At the Air Canada Centre. Yeah, in Scarborough, a suburb of Toronto. And, yeah. and um, my whole family, right, is from Toronto. And so she's like, oh, my God, Sean, that's that's incredible. And you know what I mean? And, and you know, like it was a little bit emotional, you know, get off the phone, you know, get, get undressed. Um, I, I just remember going home. You know, I had a I had a girlfriend at the time that lived with me. You know, she was very happy to hear that. And, you know, uh, she wasn't too happy to hear that I was going to Buffalo right now. But, you know, <laughs> like but but yeah, no, it was it was wonderful, man. I'll never forget the day. And um, I, I just remember like I got to be roommates with a guy. His name's Curtis Brown. And, you know, this guy ended up being a born again Christian. So you can imagine the type of personality that, that he was just, just positive and confident. And, mm-hmm. and, and, and he just, he gave me a lot of confidence and, and um, you know, I, I only played about two or three minutes that game. Um, mm-hmm. I got about three or four shifts and uh, I asked a couple guys to go and um, you know, made a couple body checks and it, it was just a dream come true, man, just to be a part of that, like the whole thing, like the process getting there with the team two and a half hours before the game, going out to the bench to tape my stick, you know, in my gitch, seeing the NHL refs flying around, getting warmed up, just looking around the, the, the stands and seeing how big it is and, and the rafters. And man, I'm a big fan, man. I'm yeah. a big fan. I went to a bunch of games as a kid, right? At Maple Leaf Gardens though. Um, and yeah, like it was a really big deal to me, man. It was a really big deal. And like, just to add, I know I'm going on, but just to add to that, it was the same time that the U S, um, invaded Iraq. Right. And what happened is the weekend before that there was a a hockey night in Canada game in Montreal. And at at that time, the U S wasn't very popular for making this decision to go in. Like Canada didn't really support them at the time. And a bunch of other countries didn't either. And so what the Montreal fans did was they booed the U.S. anthem. And so all week long, CBC and everyone was kind of criticizing the Montreal fans for doing that, saying, like, even though we're not supporting them in the war, they're still our neighboring country. We shouldn't boo them, yeah. blah, blah, blah. So my game where I got called up in Toronto, they tried to make up for that. And they were going absolutely insane for the national anthem, like just cheering. everyone singing along for the U.S. Sing? anthem. Yeah, yeah I remember and, yeah. that. And then boom, the Canadian anthem came on after that. And everyone just fired it up even more. And yeah. here I am, this just, just standing on the bench, my first NHL game, just, just shaking it. Yeah, probably <laughs> goosebumps, yeah. eh? Just hearing the crowd oh, do yeah, that. Man. It was crazy, man. It was, it was insane. Okay, so Sean, now now walk us through like your day. You go into it, you just from the getting to the arena. You're in the arena, you're two and a half hours early, and you walk in, and who who's all in the dressing room with you? Like you're you're in awe, obviously, right? Yeah. So I'm I'm in awe. Um, I remember I had a decent pregame nap. We stayed at the Weston Harbor Castle, which is yeah. I think where the <laughs> NHL teams still stay when they when they play the Leafs. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just kind of like it, it's like a less than a five minute walk from the arena. So, um, this is March, so the weather is pretty decent. And you know, I think I went over there before Curtis did. He was a big veteran, so he didn't he didn't go as early as I did. So I, I walked over. I mean, there was a couple of us that were called up at the time, like Paul Gostad was a guy that was my age. He, he got called up about a week before. Um, I think Ryan Miller was up as well. Um, so these guys were my teammates for the past couple of years. So they were both there. So I was not able to be like, hey, man, what's up? Yeah, man, yeah. Big game tonight, eh? Like, you know, good luck tonight, man. Good luck to you, too. Like, it's, it's like we're, it, it, it's almost, when you're an AHL player that's playing like your first, second game, it, it's almost like, you're like an extra in a movie, right? Yeah. Where, you know, you're, you, you, you know, you're guaranteed a paycheck for being there, but you're really there because you just want to be there. It's not even about the paycheck. It's like, you know, you just want to be in the movie and you're you an extra. So, so you're not really part of the, the main thing, but you're yeah. still a part of it, right? So, so you kind of, you're like an outsider, but you're inside for a little bit when you're a call up. And, and it's a very special feeling. And I remember guys like, I remember Tim Connolly, for example, Tim Connolly. I remember clearly him coming up to me when I was like, you know, we're getting our, you know, just, just kind of getting our t- uh, sticks taped or whatever. And he's like, you know what, man? He's like, I want to congratulate you, buddy. You're 20 years old playing your first NHL game. You know, that's fantastic. You know, and I remember thinking, thanks, Tim. And I, I really appreciate He's like, you have a lot to be proud of or something, right? Yeah. I'm like, thanks, Tim. I, I really appreciate it. It was really cool hearing that. It kind of made you grounded a little bit, but 
when I did go out to the ice to take my stick, I was one of those guys that liked to go out there and do that. Um, I, I remember like the refs kind of wheeling around and then the one ref kind of realized that, you know, I was in a little bit of a moment, like, like, you know, just, just accepting the fact that I was there and he kind of came over and he's like, Hey, it's your, it's your first game today. Isn't it? He's like, hey, good luck kid. You know what I mean? And, and it's just like, it's just cool, man. It's just cool, cool stuff. Like as a, as a fan and a former player, there, there's nothing cooler than that day of okay. playing a national hockey league game. Hey, who did you ask to fight in that game? So Belak and Domi were in the lineup. Um, there was one, <laughs> there was one face off where I got to line up against Domi. And what I said to him is I knew he'd probably say no. Cause I would probably say no. If it was a guy that just got called up to the AHL and it was the same situation. But I said to him, Hey man, I've, I've, I've been a fan my whole life. Give me a shot. Give me a shot. And I kind of whacked him on the top of the skates. So what, what Ty said, I'll never forget. <laughs> you know, Ty was very animated. So Ty's like, he, he did the thing with his lips. He's like, Pfft. he's like, kid, he's like, ask me again once you make the team. Because he knew I was like an emergency yeah. call up at the end <laughs> of the season. Like yeah. what he meant is in order to fight me, kid, because I'm way up here in the NHL, you need to not only make the team, but you got to work your way up to me. I'm not right. going here right now. Screw you. Get out of my way. Like, you know what I mean? Like, give uh -huh. me the shove or the shoulder, yeah. you know, pretend that he's going to engage. But, you know, but I mean, that was that it was a little bit of pipe dreams to think that that Ty would drop the gloves. Like it was like the middle of the second period. They're up a couple goals. It was like my second shift. You know, ties. You got to earn it. You got to hit him or something. You got to hit one of his guys. You got to do something. Like I just asked him. I would have been like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> Next shift, you just run the star. All right, Ty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you and and, and you know what, me. guys? Like, like after now that so many years have passed, like there's been times where you know, you, you know, you, you you get a couple down. And you're like, you know what? I should have just jumped in Toronto's <laughs> bench. And, yeah. You know what I mean? That like, you can talk and just say all that stuff, but but you know what? Like it's um. I, I, I tried and, and, and I'm, I'm content with how much I tried. I'm, they're well, going, you oh, you the just story. grab someone, man. It was your only NHL game. Yeah. You should have yeah. just grabbed somebody. <laughs> I'm like, you know what, man? Maybe I would have grabbed them and they would have one punched me, man. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, you like, know. Knows. like, you know, you but he's, really also, he's also got to worry about that risk, too. You could end up one punching him, and he's one of the toughest in the NHL, top five, hands down. And yeah. you one punch him and fuck. Who was that guy? Yeah. <laughs> you know? So oh yeah, yeah that, that that's awesome though. That is oh, awesome. Yeah, yeah, no, it was it literally was a dream come true, like being from it, Toronto and then the game being in Toronto, Hockey Night in Canada. It was incredible, man. Mm. Did you do the rookie skate? Like where they let you go out by yourself first? No, they didn't they didn't get me with that. Oh, okay. They didn't get me with that. So maybe awesome. if it was like in Buffalo, they might have like had time to do it or something, but you know, yeah. it was it was a road game. So although I've seen a couple of those. Yeah, those oh, are pretty funny though. Yeah, they, they they always get those guys on them now, eh? Well, because they're they're so pumped about, it. they're not even thinking about it. Hey, can you lead us out? And then the next thing you know, he's out there doing a lap by himself, and <laughs> everybody laughs about it, right? I honestly wouldn't even care. Oh no, <laughs> I, mean, I probably think he doesn't even realize he's out there. My by first himself. game, start snapping it around. Hey, um, is there anybody that you wanted to fight but you never got to? Um, I mean, I, uh, I mean, Ty Domi would have been one of them yeah. because like, I, I mean, I played, I don't know how much it was. It was like three, it was about three. Cause the one year there was the, the, the lockout. So there was no NHL camp, but three seasons I played preseason. I think I got about 11 or 12 preseason games in and I fought guys like Jody Shelley, Nathan Parrott, you know, um, Shane Knighty, Chris Neal. Um, I don't know if you guys remember that Andre Nazarov guy, that yeah. big Russian guy. He played yeah. like in Phoenix for a little bit, I think. And you know what I mean? But, but you have to remember, and like this is a topic that, I mean, is mostly owned by baseball, right? Like, like I'm talking about performance enhancers. You have to remember that after the lockout, that's when they started testing for performance enhancers as well. So, like, I don't know if you guys remember that because you guys are, like, young and stuff, right? So, like... I'm older than you. Buddy, you look like you're, like, 30. I'm 53. <laughs> Old balls. So, like, okay, but here's the point I'm trying to make. We're tight. From that year, from 2005, before 2005, the NHL did not test for performance enhancers. 
So the reality of that is a lot of the guys that had to do the role were using performance enhancers. Oh. So I'm not trying to like, like say who was or who wasn't, but if you notice the guys that were already in the NHL, like Andre Nazarov, that were doing that role, those guys that just kind of disappeared, those were kind of the guys, I guess, that depended on that the most because no. they couldn't take it anymore. They were testing for it. Obviously, the first year that you do something like that, they're like really strict on it where like everybody gets tested. And then the next year it's like random where it's like four or five guys on each team or mm -hmm. you know what I mean? But yeah, like it's just, it's interesting how all that works. Like, you know, the, 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 the league got, got really clean and the fighting just started going downhill, you know, and, and we went down a path that we focused on skill and speed, which I don't have a problem with guys. Like, like I'm a big fan of the skill of the game too. Like mm -hmm. I only had to play this way to play at the highest levels. Right. But like, I mean, I embraced it. I, I appreciated it. And I lived being that enforcer. But yeah. if I was a coach I'm telling you, my team would be one of the highest scoring teams in the league. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so so your Ty Domi story how I would start that out is I asked Ty Domi to go he was scared yeah he didn't want to <laughs> well I mean I'm trying to get Ty on hopefully you don't bump so into I, him I don't, don't want to lie too much <laughs> I know Ty's fucking yeah man that guy was an absolute animal oh um, one of the things that will kind of will kind of maybe bounce back to the hockey stuff in a bit here but one of the things that I kind of wanted to speak to you about is like the whole Subban thing. Like, what was your, like, how did you feel about it? Like, because it was horrible timing. They just celebrated Willie O'Ree. You know what I mean? And just everything going on. I know the guy had a video out and everything, and he was sorry and this and that. But, like, what was your take? Like, what did you see through all that? I mean, okay, so this whole thing, I mean, obviously it's an extremely sensitive topic, but it's an extremely important topic, right? The thing is, guys, is that, the guy that was involved with Subban, who knows if he, of what he meant to do or if he was doing a strong man thing and it got a misconception. No one knows that except for that guy and Jordan. Mm. No one really knows what was said between them except for that guy and Jordan. They weren't mic'd up that game. You know what I mean? No one knows what the buildup was to that. All I know is that it was in overtime. Yeah, that the best players were on the ice. It wasn't like it was like fourth line against fourth line. Things are getting chippy. No, mm. this is in overtime. These are the best five, the best 10 players on both teams are on the ice. And it got to the point where Jordan Subban is going absolutely insane, wanting to kill somebody. Mm. Then you see a guy come off his bench, Jordan Subban's bench. I don't know if you guys noticed that. No, I didn't. But one of Jordan Subban's two teammates came off the bench to try to get the guy as well. And he actually, I, the, the, some of the footage that I saw, the guy that, his teammate that came off the bench actually got him yeah. the one time. Yeah, I've seen he that. connected. Too. And then, you know, a bunch of guys fall. And you know what I mean? So, okay. So the one guy is saying that, He's not racist at all. There was no race or gesture. He was simply doing a strong man thing, which he's done several times before. And then all of a sudden, all hell broke loose. Is it possible? It's possible. Again, we don't know. What we do know is that there's a, a problem with inclusion in hockey, right? We can't solve everything right now. The way things get solved is... When there's programs and, and awareness and action being made over time, you start to see a difference. Mm -hmm. I'm involved with programs like Seaside Hockey, which is which is involved, which is taken place in Scarborough in, in Toronto. And it's a program that is government funded, also by the NHL, where any kid that's never played before is able to come, he's able to have access to equipment. And he's being welcomed to come to try this game of hockey. Awesome. So from these programs, you're going to see kids that look like me, that might be Southeast Asian, that, that might be from China, like, like yeah. wherever they're from. All nationalities. But it's going to be a diverse of, of people that, that are playing. Years from now, you're going to see a little bit of a difference in the arena. 
The problem when I was growing up, guys, is as a kid playing at the highest level that I possibly could all the way up from, from whatever AAA starts when you're nine years old, mm -hmm. all the way to your 15 in Bantam. I know the age groups have changed now. I always played at the highest level. But the thing is, is that when I was in the arena, when I was eight, nine, 10 years old, I would think to myself, how come nobody looks like me at, at this arena? Like, how come there's not one person that looks like me? And it wasn't just because of that, but I also had the feelings of why do I not feel welcome with, with, with parents on other teams, with people that work at the arena, with the snack bar person? Why do I not feel completely welcome unless I have two or three of my close teammates beside me? If I'm by myself, I, I don't really feel welcome. Like people aren't making me feel welcome. And that's the feelings that I had to go through as a kid 25 years ago or however, like I'm 40 now, right? Yeah. So that's what I had to go through 30 years ago as a hockey player playing at the highest levels. Now you say, nice. well, Sean, you know what? We're sorry you had to feel that way. You know, what can we do to help? What can we do to change this? Well, we can have programs like Seaside Hockey be magnified, be talked about more, have more participants. That way you won't have kids feeling now the way I felt when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. As far as the Jordan Subban situation, the problem with that, guys, like I said, we're not sure exactly what happened, but the problem, the shitty thing about it is that that was the third incident in pro hockey this season. I know. There was an incident that we all saw. I don't know if it was a Ukraine or Slovakia yeah. or yeah. wherever that was, mm -hmm. right? Where, yeah. where, where the guy really it made it known what he was doing. Yeah, he was right? an asshole. Yeah, I right? seen that one. That yeah. was brutal. There was that incident. Then there was like an incident in the AHL that happened. I didn't like a month see that one. Ago. What happened I'm, there? What, in Slovakia or the AHL? The AHL one. I think the AHL was, was words. I think oh, okay. there was a slur of some sort that was heard by an official and, and, and the guy was, was suspended for that. So then you got this Subban incident. So then it's just kind of like, okay, so the incidents happen, you know, Akeem Alou and the HGA, they all give their statements and, and, you know, this, that, the other, and Black Lives Matter. And, you know, we can say all this all we want, guys. And, 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 it's, and it's good to talk about it. It's good to open the dialogue. But to just have these cliches and 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 just statements you know headline statements like like that's not really going to solve anything what's going to mm -hmm. solve anything is the programs like seaside hockey which bring inclusion to hockey which which make hockey more diverse right mm -hmm. and 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 education you know what i mean and so so like man i i, I feel bad for jordan i feel bad for for anyone involved in that situation that kid was is suspended for the rest of the season. So in my opinion, the kid's career is probably over mm -hmm. because what's going to happen is he's now lost a year. Then, okay, what is agents going to try to get him some, he's at the East coast level now. So his agents going to try to get him some American league camps and they're going to look at his name and be like, you're the guy that got suspended for the yeah. year for Aren't you the the racist? Yeah. Um, uh, we'll pass on that. Right. You know what I mean? So now this kid, no matter what he did, no one knows he he's done. He's being used as an example. Right. right? Jeff Kugel, just like Jeff Kugel, just like Jeff Kugel was. Yeah. Right. So it, it's very unfortunate. It, it, it's a very sensitive topic. Um, I thought that PK PK is not my favorite player, but PK speaks very well. And, and he's very educated on topics. And mm. I was happy with how PK, um, when PK was interviewed the next day or the day of, well, it must've been the next day because it was a night game. Mm. Um, I thought that he spoke about it very well and addressed it well. Um, I know that it, it's unfortunate that PK is the type of player that he is because a lot of, a lot of people are kind of ticked off with PK with the slew footing and, yeah. and all that type of stuff. So it's yeah. just kind of like, PK why, can, slew why can't PK, <laughs> you know, play like, um, Pe Petrangelo on Vegas or something. And then people would probably listen to him a little bit more. He's dirty right? as fuck. He's dirty. Right. <laughs> yeah. So again, he's not my favorite player. Mm -hmm. I, I admire him as a person. He's a very good hockey player, 
Um, I thought they addressed it properly, but I don't think it really got out as much just because he's not really liked that much in the hockey community because of the slew footing. Let's yeah. be honest. I would have rather right. have heard from his brother. I'd rather have heard from Jordan as well, but right. I think I they yeah, thought yeah. that they probably just, didn't want him to do any fucking anything like that. Cause he's probably red hot. Right. So they probably, probably red hot. So, and, so and two PK's, things, sorry, go right. ahead, Rob. So two things about this. Um, one, I just watched a thing on Morgan Freeman. Like he had like a public announcement thing. I don't know if you've seen it or not, but he was saying, why is it black history month? Why isn't it just history? You know, like, and, and stop with the, the, the black stuff. Like it, it just, if, if you take it out of the equation, nobody's talking about it. Same thing with rappers saying that yeah. too. And, but by them saying it, it still exists. If you don't say it anymore, it doesn't exist anymore. And then you mind will mind. find out who are your racists. Like, I don't know. I, I'm, a, I'm a white boy, grew up <laughs> blue collar. Yeah. You know, I, I don't know. But I also watched, and, and that being said, I also watched the, the interview from the kid that was uh, allegedly did whatever. And I, I felt for him, like his yeah. career, like you said, yeah. is over. He was crying when he was talking about it. And I thought he didn't do what they said. And like the guys from Spit and Chicklets also said that they talked to some of his college guys and they said, he's not that guy. Mm -hmm. So whether he, like you said, he's the only one that knows what he did. Subban doesn't, he interpreted it whatever way, but that guy is the only one that knows what he did. And I saw some of his videos where he has fought and he flexed on people like Tom Wilson, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, then you got it. Yeah. What, what do you do about Tom Wilson? Yeah, I saw I, I, I saw a social media post where there's a picture of Tom Wilson doing the same thing and them explaining that this is what the kid does. That's kind of his thing that he does when he gets right. into an altercation. And, and, and I and I totally get that. Now, here's the thing. What I meant about it's only Jordan and that kid that knew what happened leading up to that point is right. that we don't know. Yeah. If there was words in warm up, we don't know if there was oh, words yeah, in the yeah, first yeah. period, second period, third period, end of the third period. And now it's overtime. And that just put Jordan over the edge, him right. doing that. Maybe yeah. the guy, for some reason, had a bad day and he just happened to go over the line that day. We don't know. Maybe he didn't at all. Maybe all he did was that one motion in overtime that he does all the time and Jordan took it wrongly. We don't know. We don't know that. I feel bad because I'm a hockey player. I know this topic inside and out, brother. I was, my mom's white, my dad's black. I was raised in my mom's family. All my cousins are white. Most of my friends and, and hockey teammates, white growing up, okay? To society, I'm a light-skinned black guy. On the ice hockey rink, I'm a dark-skinned black guy, <laughs> right? <laughs> but, like, the point is, guys, is that I've been playing hockey my whole life. I've usually been the only guy with pigment in my skin on my teams growing up. Mm. I get this. I've been through it. I've had guys suspended saying stuff to me in my pro career that, that we too. can get into. Yeah. I, I, I've, I've, so the thing that kind of bothers me a little bit, and this is something that I kind of mm. want to get out there, and I'm hoping that, you know, this, this, this does get out these – this statement is there's a little bit of a problem with guys wanting to talk about this that have no experience with the topic. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to talk down to people. I'm not trying to say, Oh, I'm special because I'm in the minority in the sport. So I get to talk about things and you don't, mm -hmm. it's not about that. But I saw certain podcasts jump on this topic and I wanted like on social media, I wanted to like comment and I was like, should I comment? And what I wanted to comment was say, wow, like this is a very sensitive, sensitive topic. Do you have a panel on this show that you're going to talk about the Subban incident? Mm -hmm. Because it doesn't seem like there's anyone that's part of the show that might have any experience with racism or how Jordan may have felt or, you know what I mean? So I think that's morally and just, just sensibly irresponsible for, for, for guys like even spitting chiclets, bro. Like I'm the biggest fan of Bissy and all those guys. Mm -hmm. But unless those guys have a brother on there to give his opinion, I don't even think it's appropriate mm -hmm. for them to be talking about this.
right. you know, and, and we have to have a little bit more respect for the topic because that's the mistake that we've made over the years is when we've addressed certain things, we're having people make decisions and rules that have never been through it before. Mm -hmm. So how can they give an opinion of something that they've never been through before on a topic? And, 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 and I, and I, like I said, like, I don't want to be criticizing it. There needs to be a platform. It needs to be talked about, but guys, for the shows out there that want to talk about it, you got to bring someone on that has <laughs> had some kind of experience with it, or it really defeats the purpose, in my opinion. I and, and I believe any players that have any pigment in their skin have the same opinion. I, mm -hmm. I, I believe that I am the majority voice for this topic when yeah. it comes to, to shows doing this with no one on the panel that has any experience. Mm -hmm. Isn't isn't Paul uh, Bizonet what is dad black and his I'm mom not sure. white though? I think one I, of I, his I'm parents. Sure. Are. I, I think he's he's half. I think I, I think he is. I Does think he, he is, talk Rob. about like his experiences of racism? He, I think he or? has mentioned. He a few has. Things yeah. that before, I, I'm almost. I'm almost That's positive good. because I That's remember good. him saying, like, I, and like I had no idea. You know yeah. what I mean? And then I remember him saying, you know, I've 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 heard this stuff. You know, like. Yeah. But, but he's of more Caucasian side, right? So yeah, I, and I mean, I mean, and, and that's, that's a sensitive topic too. A lot of people like, like my, my buddy, Chris Stewart, for example, yeah. Anthony Stewart's younger brother, they're brothers. Anthony's a lot darker than Chris. Chris, Chris is, they come from the same parents, you know, their mom's white, the dad's black. Both those guys Chris are tough has as kind of shit orangey too, hair, man. super, super light. Yep. And when he has his helmet on, people might not know that the man's father's 100% black, right? right? So we have to be sensitive to that as well. We mm -hmm. can't just assume that. But, but the, the main point I wanted to try to make is we have to have more respect for the topic. And yep. if, if, if shows are going to want to talk about this, then they're going to have to go out of their way and they're going to have to bring someone in that's not normally a part of their show unless they already have someone that fits the bill that's mm -hmm. had experience in right. this, yeah. right? So now, now you said you've had to deal with some of that and you're pro. And you oh, said, in, yeah, like as yeah. a pro, you had to deal with that. Like what kind of yeah, shit dude. Do you have to and, deal and, with? And here's the thing, bro. Like, I mean, we're talking about it now, right? I've wanted to talk about it a couple of times. It wasn't really the right, the right place. It wasn't really the right show to bring it up. Um, you know, it being February and I know Rob, what we're saying about, you know, why does it have to be black history month? Why can't it just be history? You're absolutely right, bro. I'm on the same page as you, but at, it being February, a lot of this stuff comes up, right? Cause like mm -hmm. a lot of people seem to have to address it because it's the time or whatever. Right. right. Um, so, I mean, for me, I have an experience of playing for the Rochester Americans and, you know, I'm a little bit, cause guys, everybody can change. Everybody can change. Yeah. I mean, that's one of my biggest models of my life right now. I mean, listen to me. I'm a guy that had to do some time. So I know that everybody could change, right? Like, I, like I know that, like I, I can't, you know, right. So I don't want to say names only because I think that out of respect of, of, of the fact that people can change, of, of respect of the fact that maybe I'll ask this player to come on a panel and we can talk about what happened 20 years ago and how things have changed since then and what they've learned from it, if they want to acknowledge it, if I want to forgive, maybe that would be a great show to have. For but sure. I was on the Rochester Americans. It, it, it wouldn't be hard to figure this out. People can go into the records and stuff. I, I had an altercation with another player and that player um, used racial, obvious racial remarks to try to, to try to chirp me or make me feel bad or whatever the, the, the purpose of it was, mm -hmm. um, the hate. Um, and the refs all heard it. They all heard him say it. They all heard, he, he made some gestures as well and, oh, and stuff. Okay. And, you know, the linesman heard it. It was after one of our, it was after a fighting major. And he was suspended two games by the AHL. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the penalty was called. I don't know what they called it, this, the, this, the suspension, if it was an unsportsmanlike. I'm not really sure what it was. But um, that was the reason for the suspension. And I remember um, the player had actually played for Rochester before this team. 
And Randy Cunnyworth was, was familiar with the guy. And he pulled me aside after practice. And he's like, you know, Mac, um, uh, so-and-so has been suspended for what happened, uh, you know, after your guy's fight. But I want you to know that I know him and that's out of his character. And, and I'm very sorry that that happened. Right. And, and like, that was something. And then, you know what, this was back in 2002, 2003 guys. So this mm -hmm. is almost 20 years ago. Um, I'm 20, 21 years old. And, you know, I was upset with what happened, but big picture wise, I was an adult. I wasn't a little kid. You know, I was being paid. It was at work. Mm -hmm. um, it was, there was a lot of things that kind of helped me get, get past that as opposed to being a 10 year old kid, just trying to play competitive hockey and having like the parents on an opposite team say something weird to you racially. Yeah. And you're only 10 years old. And how are you supposed to deal with that? Yeah, like it was right. completely different. Right. That's, like I was that's just a mind fuck there. Yeah, right. That's fucked. Where you're oh, 20 yeah. years old and you can, you can get past it and say, okay, I get it. It's the heat of the moment. Said the wrong thing. You know, like yeah. it's, it's the same thing as calling somebody gay, but you know what they're, they're what I'm talking about. Like yeah. you can't say that anymore. You don't. can't say any of it. It's just wrong. Yeah. So you have to be more creative with your church, you, you know? <laughs> just, well, or I just mean, don't be an asshole. Right. No, <laughs> to, to attack somebody for their, their race or their belief or their whatever is just insane. Probably right? mad because you probably whooped his ass. So he was all pissed off. At you. Sure. Well, that, that, would, that, that, was, that was part of it. But I mean, <laughs> the other thing, guys, is, is there's so many, because we're on the topic, there's so many levels to what we're talking about. Like, I don't know if you guys have ever heard George LaRock's story. George no. LaRock, after his family left Montreal, they went to a small town in Sorel, Quebec. It was what it was called. That's, it's the city that, that Nasty Morasty played for in the LNAH, yeah. Yeah. the Sorel team. That city, apparently extremely racist 30, oh, wow. 40 years ago. And George LaRock was called the N-word every single game, every single day. And these were from parents on his own team. That's wow. Yelling it. Yelling it at Georges, the best player on the ice in Sorel, Quebec, just being tortured as a kid. And he talked about it on my show. And, and, and having, hearing one of my idols, yeah. a guy that smile never goes away, yeah. so charismatic, great long hair. You yeah. guys know what George is like. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's an incredible great. human being. Tough as nails. Yeah. Hearing him talk about this, that he was called the N-word every single day when he was 9, 10, 11, 12 years old, like it, 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 was, it was heartbreaking, yeah, right? Not even but right. that opened up my eyes. I'd never heard that before about George LaRock. Mm -hmm. That opened my eyes to know the levels of the problem in hockey when it comes to racism. There's mm -hmm. that type of extreme in Sorel, Quebec, 30 years ago. There's the extreme of, of uh, for, in, in Toronto, maybe being made fun of in the dressing room a little bit by your teammates because you guys are in grade seven, grade eight, and that's kind of what's happening at school with the social movements. Mm -hmm. There's a whole different levels to it, guys. But um, when it comes down to it, I'm happy with the direction that everything's going. It looks like everything's being put on a platform to be talked about. The discussions are being opened. My opinion, when people ask me what we can do to change it, it's the programs that I mentioned earlier, like Seaside Hockey. Yeah. Um, but I'm just glad that people are being open to have an open discussion about it. Yeah, man. I wanted to ask you because I knew you probably had something to say on it. So I was like, well, what a perfect guy to ask than you, right? Like, Well, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's just like, I mean, guys, like I, um, I, I love the game. I love the game. I love the fact that I'm still a part of the game while they're trying to perfect it because mm -hmm. that's pretty much what's happening. It's a great sport that we have. Now we're just trying to see how we can grow the sport. It's almost like hockey's gotten capped off mm -hmm. with their audience. And now we're trying to get into dim different demographics. And what does that include? Well, it includes people that might have some pigment in their skin. Yeah. You know, we got, we got to include them to make it a worldwide sport, right? Yeah. And, and that's the movement that's happening now. And, and, I'm, and I'm all for it. Good. Well, I'm always nervous talking about it because I don't want to sound racist. It's you sensitive, know, like, Rob. And if you if you say the wrong thing, you you hurt the wrong people. You but to to make this point, the yeah. French are assholes, and I brought this up all the time on our show. 
<laughs> I mean, I um, I I had That's a great time. Dumb dumber. I know you're being sarcastic. I I had a wonderful time uh, uh, living in the province of Quebec. It's an incredible culture. Um, a little bit misunderstood um, with English parts of the country. Um, but but overall, like I had a great time. I was accepted um, very well by a community Saguenay that's ninety eight percent francophone, and you know I was I was accepted with open arms. I even got in trouble a little bit up there, and they still they they still accepted me, and mm. and so I'm thankful for that. Um, I think the way you treat people is the way that you should expect to get treated back. Um, it's ju it's just unfortunate when other stuff comes into play, right? And, and you, it's out of your control. That was very well said, because my mom always said that. Treat people the way you want to be treated. Yeah. So and that's you know, where you get good. all your brains from, exactly. is your mother. Yes, yes. My dad, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Nice, nice guy. Hey, uh, one of the things, too, I wanted to ask you, because you kind of been everywhere, traveled everywhere, you played fucking in a lot of cities and everything. You guys ever get any of those rookie parties going on? Like, how was those when you guys would go out on the town and stuff like that? Well, I mean, the rookie parties used to be off the chain, man. Like, it, they used to be <laughs> really, really good, even all the way down to the, the junior levels in the OHL. But just like everything else, um, you know, they – I mean, I'm not trying to say that hazing is – well, hazing was a major part of the rookie parties, but <laughs> – they eliminated all that stuff. They did it like a, they started doing like zero tolerance. And, and I understand because there was a lot of bad stuff that was coming out of it. Like guys just being forced to like consume a certain amount of alcohol and guys, yeah. guys, some guys get really sick. And, but I mean, back in the day, you could do all that kind of stuff. And, and, and I, I just remember, but it was more about money. Like the rookies really got hit in the pocket. Like they had to pay for everything, you know, and, and, and yeah, and stuff like that. But, but yeah, dude, I, I've been to a couple of rookie parties where, you know, it's, um, you don't remember half the night you, 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 you do some really silly things and, um, but it's, it's great team bonding. I still do that. Yeah. Oh, what's that, Rob? I still do that. You still do that, of don't course. Remember, I, mean, that, that's a, that's, I, I just explained Rob's nightly routine. Hey. Yeah, I'm, at a, I'm at a rookie party every Saturday. Hey, yeah. I was going to say, that's a fucking Sunday afternoon for me after hockey. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean, though? Like, times have changed, though. Like, they, you can't do yeah. the stuff that you did before unless it's, like, top secret. Right. Because if it gets out, it's a big problem. I know. I figured well, you kind of dance. Everybody's got a phone and everybody can film yeah, whatever. Right? Everywhere. So nothing is a secret anymore. And did you notice when I asked that, how he kind of danced around the question a little bit? Yeah, like, still, I'm yeah, not, still I'm not telling it. you shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, you were coached by uh, Rick Bive. Yeah. What was that experience like? Because I've heard a lot of different stories about him. Yeah, I mean... I'll tell you one thing. He was one of my favorite interviews I've done lately. I had him on my show lately, right? Really? But the funny thing is, is that we get along great right now, but we didn't get along when he was my coach, though. Yeah. Because, I mean, well, I mean, that season, the Mississauga Ice Dogs, that's the team that, that we were together on. That season with Jason Spezza, um, before he got traded to Windsor, had three wins that year. I think when I left, it was two wins. And that was, was that Don like, Cherry owned that at that time? Don Cherry still owned the team. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, Trevor Whiffin was the general manager. And, you know, so obviously if you're losing every game, everybody hates each other, everyone's chirping each other. Like, it's terrible. When you're winning, yeah. life is wonderful. When you're losing, it's like the end of the world. And right. we were losing. So it was like the end of the world. And Rick definitely wasn't my favorite coach. That's for sure. But, but we get along really well now, man. And, and man, he's a, he's a pretty funny guy, man three wins my god so so can you give us one of your best uh coaching stories like you know coming in kicking the camp flushing the toilet and saying that's what your game looked like you know what i mean like just one of those <laughs> crazy things that even guys are just like putting their shirts over top of their face so they can't see him laughing at him because he fell or or whatever well i mean i mean i mean rick might get a little upset with me but i mean so i mean uh <laughs> I guess shortly after I left, like I said, it was a season where they only won three games, right? So, you know, like usually when that happens, like the LA Lakers right now, they're not having a good season. So everyone's trying to like blame uh, uh, 
uh, Westbrook. They're trying to bl blame Westbrook. It's Westbrook's fault. We got to trade Westbrook. Well, Rick Vive. Uh, basketball, was, you're talking about? Yeah, I'm talking yeah. about basketball. See, I'm too short to watch that sport. The LA Lakers, <laughs> LeBron James's team, they're all blaming I know Westbrook, that. right? So that year, we're blaming Rick Vive because he was the coach. Everyone right. wanted to blame the coach. So shortly after I left, I guess they, they like, they like almost blew up the man's car in, in the parking lot. Yeah, they like, like the sabotage the They put like bananas and all that weird stuff in the in the gas tank by the Hershey Center. That was what it was called at the time. And they're just like that's this is the end of the oh, season. Shit. They put salt in it. And I don't know, man. They sabotaged the man's car. I think he mentioned that on my show. He wasn't too happy of telling it, but. No. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's, I, 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 when I learned that happened, I was, I was amazed and, mm. and that I got it, have that as a coaching story because they, they were trying to sabotage the head coach, Rick Vives car. And that's what they did. That's crazy, man. Now that was the fans <laughs> or the team that did that. What's that? Was that the, the players or the, the team? players that were still there? I was traded. Wow. I was well, traded to Kingston and then eventually London with with the Hunter brothers. Oh, the fucking right? players. The players that stuck around for the end of the year. Spezza was gone too. Spezza oh. was on the team that year. He was up for the draft. It was either going to be either him or Ilya Kovalchuk, and Kovalchuk ended up going first. Spezza went two, but he was uh, where you guys are. He got traded to Windsor. Yeah, he was awesome. I watched him a bunch of times play. Yeah, special. La player. Lazy though, he was lazy. Spezza? Yeah, yeah. yeah how about, I remember how, how big he was. He though. played one end of the ice and that was it. Yeah. <laughs> how about now, Rob? You love him now, don't oh, you? I love him. He's great. I, I'm a big <laughs> Toronto fan, and I, I think he's the, the most underrated, underpaid player on that team. He has oh, the yeah, most no. heart, hands down, and still just plugging away. You know, like he's just fantastic. I love him. Like, but he also grew up, right? And learned yeah. how to play both ends of the ice. So you know, like I just, I would have loved them to have picked up Corey Perry as well. Yeah. I guys, both those guys still have game, you know, and you can get them for under a million bucks. Sign me mm -hmm. up. No, I know. Yeah. That's the thing, man. You got a couple of those guys on your team. You're making a push for the cup. No, well, when least... you think about uh, Evander Kane going to Edmonton, this man has had a lot of problems in a lot of places. Yeah, I mean, Evander's, oh man, he, he, he's, he's one of those guys where it's like he's got all the talent in the world, but he acts like he's 18 still, yeah, right? Right. 17, maybe. And, I mean, the guy speaks extremely well. He's got all this, he's, he's got all this charisma. You know, all the girls love him. I hope he can put it, bring, put it together, man. I mean, he had a good first game. Yeah, I haven't seen him again. do anything since then. I've seen him get hit into the – He got hurt when he got hit into the bench yeah yeah he got hurt off that play yeah well he left the game right so uh, oh, okay so he left the game after he yeah. got put over the boards right but you know what in, in all honesty you you got to kind of look at um what's his name there from windsor um that place for Edmonton as well cassian right. you know like he was kind of off the tr tracks you know and, and that's right and he got to edmonton and now he's on the you know, he's doing very well for himself. And, and you know, I, I love watching the guy play. And I love his game. Like, it's yes. just awesome. Hopefully, Evander can get, get the same thing and get his his career back on track, you know? Like, well, I think I really like to see that because he's he's a 30 to 50 goal scorer. Yeah. Well, he's probably yes, now he at the point where he's, like, realized, like, this is my last shot. This is – I need to – I need this to go well. And he's playing, essentially, for next year he's playing for a contract right now yeah. he's playing for yeah. a contract well he it, it's i i imagine it's it's all locker room shit you know you don't really see him do bad stuff out on the ice but then you end up hearing oh he's in trouble again he's in trouble mm -hmm. again you know? yeah but a lot of that shit though was his ex saying shit too right like she come out with a bunch of stuff and accused him of a bunch of stuff but what he was doing with the like vaccine passport and all that stuff was crazy but besides that it was all like he said she said shit right yeah. Yeah. I mean, he definitely wasn't with a girl that had his best interests in mind. <laughs> right. I mean, a lot of the hockey guys make that mistake. You know, they get these trophy wives and you know what I mean? And, and yeah, they might be fun when you're young, but once you get a little bit older and life gets serious, then mm -hmm. you know that they're not there for the right reasons. And it looked like Evander was a strong case of that. Um, so, I mean, if he's moved on from that relationship, if he's grown up, what I had heard was, I mean, I'm, I'm really good buddies with guys like Chris Thorburn and, 
guys that were playing in Winnipeg when he was there, right. From that Atlanta team, even with big buff and all those guys. Yeah. And, you know, you, you see the picture of buff giving him the finger when they're coming out and, he, and <laughs> you could tell that Evander's like, you know, he's either hurt or scratch or something. Cause he's in his gitch. And, you know, most of that stuff was Evander, you know, being very immature, a lot of stuff to do with girls getting in fights with guys on his team over girls, stupid, young, immature stuff like that. Right. right. So I think that was like five, 10 years ago. And I think that now if the guy can really turn the page, I mean, can you imagine if you have the skill of a good hockey player and you're out of a job and it's like, what would be your number one wish right now? Well, my number one wish would be to get an NHL job and maybe be able to play with Connor McDavid. Yeah. No shit, yeah. <laughs> well, no here you go. Yeah. Leon Dreisaitl, like we're sending you to Edmonton, yeah. and we're gonna put you on a line with Connor McDavid. Yeah. How does that sound, there, Evander? Go to the you net with I mean? your stick He's on the ice. The opportunity of a lifetime. Yeah. Right? I mean, I really hope he takes advantage of it. I hope he does too, because like he, he's such a skilled player. Like, and to score in your first game, it, it, you know what I mean? Like, he he potted one, and it, it was it was awesome. You yeah. Know? Like, I'm like, good for him. Good for yeah. him. And it then took him you just minutes. hope that you, you don't see that stupid step backwards. Yeah. You know? I wish him all the best. I want, I want him to do well. It would Me be too. great for Edmonton. It'd be amazing for Edmonton. Right. How they smart would that they GM need look? A structure. They need Kenny Holland. I don't know what's going on there, but they Kenny need Holland. help. And I think he could help as long as he could stay mentally focused in the dressing room. I think yeah. that's why they put him on a line with a guy like connor because he's it's an exploding opportunity for him and he i'm sure he knows that go to the net with your stick on the ice you're gonna sc- i could score a goal with connor yeah. mcdavid on the ice for fuck's sakes like you know what i, I mean? might even put, put a couple in. Cam on too yeah i fucking right just so uh, that way i could say look i got a pass from connor mcdavid and i didn't miss it yeah <laughs> there you know, man. yeah no it's opportunity of a lifetime mm-hmm. hey so I, I i watched some of your fights today uh well i've watched a few uh throughout the whatever since the last time you were on and uh, you had one with uh, one of our boys that was on the show, like uh, John. John Nasty. John? Nasty. Oh, oh, Marasty. Yeah, yeah, no, I've had it. Yeah, man. How he strong is, is he? Oh, man. Like that guy, it, it, it's some of these guys don't even seem like they seem like they have superhuman powers. Yeah. John Marasty has like a superhuman power. Like what his knuckles can take. The amount of punches that he throws in a fight is like three, four times the amount of a normal fight. Right. All my fights with him, I found were so much more entertaining than any of my other fights than anyone else, just because right. he he makes the style come to him, right? Yep. And man, he's just he's just one of the toughest guys I've ever come in contact with. Like he, he's unreal, man. He's so gonna cool. be a judge in that ice wars competition. Yeah, oh, is he? But I, yeah. I, I watched I watched one of your fights with him and he's he's kind of waving you in, you know, and then yeah. you guys engage and you just start jackhammering him and he's just got his head, you got no bucket on, you guys both spun him, and he's got his head down, and you're just teeing off on his head, and he's just yeah. taking it and he's got a smile on his Oh head. yeah, no, he's I don't think it hurts him. He's nuts. No, he <laughs> I, I I don't <laughs> think the shots hurt him. Yeah. Like even with the even with the Steve Bosse fights, like like he, it's either like Boss is the only one that could put Morasti down, but it's either Morasti's going down or he's just never going to go down. Right. So unless it's Boss, he's never going down. That's crazy. <laughs> so, I, so who would you say was the toughest guy you fought? Well, that Steve Boss guy, he was the hardest punch. He's the only guy to TKO me. Oh, really? I'm not an offensive guy, as you guys know from watching a bunch of my fights. Like, mm-hmm. I, you know, I'm a defensive fighter, but. He, he he's the only guy to ever TKO me. That's like right. he buckled me. Like he didn't knock me out, but he buckled me. I hit my head on the ice. It was the first time I ever fought him. This was back in like 2006. Jesus. So that's what I wanted to ask you. When you would get your literature on who's tough, who's not like, you know what I mean? You're, you're going down the list. Would it tell you if they were right-handers or left-handers or, or it any of that? It, no, no. <laughs> It wouldn't say that, but obviously you would kind of know sometimes by the way they shot, but okay. you have your own scouting report for the fighting. Like, you, you know, who's the lefty and who's a righty just from asking around or, you know, after 2005, there was the YouTube videos. And, right. Yeah. Right. You know, 
Fuck yeah. So <laughs> yeah, man, you can do your little scouting report. <laughs> YouTube is probably, you know, a, a minor league and NHL enforcers um, best friend. Yeah, it was sure. like a guide. Yeah. Because I've heard a lot of guys like, you know, they didn't care who they fought, what they did. And then you go, then they're doing their interviews and you go, and then he surprises me. He's left-handed. Mm-hmm. Oh, <laughs> you yeah, know? So- I didn't see that coming. Why didn't anybody tell me, you know, like. Yeah. That'd be a surprise. It's pretty wild to have to do your research on that job, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. One thing that we actually haven't really shot the shit on either is you spent some time overseas. Yeah. Too, didn't you? So how did all that come about? Um, I was playing for the Rockford Ice Hogs in the AHL, and my general manager at the time was a gentleman named Mark Bernard, who was a goalie when hockey first became professional in England, right? They they called it like the Super League or whatever back in those days. And so he had connections over there. The Belfast Giants were trying to recruit an AHL type fighter that they could have as their community guy in Belfast. Cause I don't know if you guys know the history of Northern Ireland, but there's a big war between the Catholics and Protestants in that country still to this day. Still, yes. And they, you know, they call it the troubles and the height of it was in the seventies. There has been a peace agreement, but there's still a lot of conflict that happens in the region. And they use the Belfast giants. The, the British government uses the professional hockey team to bring the communities together. One, because it's a new sport Um, They've made it strictly neutral. Um, The color of the Belfast Giants is neutral between any Ranger or Celtic colors, which is traditionally Catholic or Protestant. Um, The Belfast Giant emblem and logo is based on the Giants Causeway, which is the northern tip of Ireland, which has nothing to do with any religion, any soccer team or any reason for conflict. When you come into the arena, the only thing you could wear is either a Belfast Giants jersey or civilian clothes. You can't wear any other types of jerseys that might make you be part of a sack that might cause any fights in the stands. There's no national anthem. Everything is, is been, has been brought together to bring the communities together in Belfast. So I was the player that was the face of that. I would do three to four appearances a week. We would go to rec centers, gyms, schools. There'd be a busload of Catholic kids, a busload of of Protestant kids, and they would come in. And the reason why my message would resonate is because of some of the topics that we're talking about today. I don't look like the normal hockey player. Not I shouldn't say normal. I don't look like your average hockey player, right? I'm I'm a unique looking hockey player. You know, you don't you don't see my my type of look as much as you see other looks. So what the message was was if I didn't take a risk and joined a group that may not have had the same interests or or looks as me, then Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be able to be here right now talking to you guys as we speak as a Belfast giant. And then, so the kids would be like, Oh, wow. You know, he's right. And then I would talk about all, all the risks that I took, how, how, how it's such a minority of of someone of color playing hockey, but Mm -hmm. because I've done this, all the great experiences that I've gained, the things that I've learned, the fact that I'm here with you guys right now, it's all because of hockey. And it's because I took a risk to do something that may not have had the exact same similarities as I had, right? Mm -hmm. So we're talking about Catholics taking a risk of being friends with a Protestant kid and vice versa. And the program was great. I was so glad to be a part of it. The hockey was wonderful as well over there. But um, the life experiences overall um, were, were, were just uh, priceless, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, how were crazy. the bus? How long were the bus trips? Oh. Well, the good thing about Belfast is we flew everywhere except oh, nice. for the teams in Scotland. We would take the ferry to Scotland, and then we would take the bus. There was a, a team in Glasgow. There was a team in Edinburgh, and then the next year there was an expansion team in Dundee. That's the team I went to my my second year. Is but hockey was, still doing well there? Hockey, yeah, hockey's doing well. It's they allow 10 imports in that league. So it's like two lines and two sets of D that are mostly Canadian guys yep. from the East Coast League or the AHL. So the, so the level's pretty high. The British hockey players are getting better and better. Mm-hmm. Um, 20 years ago, there wasn't a lot of good British players. Now there's like dozens of them. Mm-hmm. So the, the, the hockey is getting better overall. They're pretty close to qualifying for like the world championships and stuff. Oh, they're man. still like sure. in like the, the pool B or like, like they're not in like the main yet, but they're yep. getting there. Yeah. I was like the see- they, they should be coming up to the Spangler cup and stuff. Yeah. 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 Okay. That's, that's awesome. Cause yeah, like, one of our GB, boys, they call them. I was just going to say one of our boys plays over yeah, there. Yeah. Right? Denny, Denny Purdy. 
Yeah. Okay, right on. Yeah, he and was a letter, Matt, right? Yeah, Matt's over in Germany Sorry. right now, right? Yeah, Pumple. Matt Pumple. Yeah, he's over in Germany playing right now. I think he loves it there, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's crazy though. Going overseas, like, wasn't that like kind of like culture shock going over there? Or was oh, it big just time, kinda... bro. Big time. You know what side of the street they drive on in the UK? It's yeah, completely it's the opposite it? of here. The, the 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 steering wheels are are on the right side of the car, but you're driving on the left lane. Yeah, like everything is opposite. So all the cars in Europe are pretty much standard. You have to use your left arm oh to shift God. gears, like. Everything's opposite, man. Imagine the, the oh. Canadian licenses, they transfer over perfectly. So oh, really? part of your contract is to have a flat and a car, like either shared or your, or your own, depending on your status. I right. was coming from the AHL, so I got everything on my own. And they pretty much just hand you the keys to your car and say, good luck, mate. <laughs> oh, so, you, so you're a big wheel over there. Well, I mean, I, I, because I came from the AHL, like it's AHL and East coast are the, are the guys that come that are imports. Right. So all the AHL guys are going to be offered the most money. So right. I was offered a great deal. They paid for my, for my girlfriend to come over as well. So we both were there. We, we got brought to our apartment. They showed us around. They gave us 200 pounds just to buy some groceries. And they're just like, all right, here's your keys to your car. Your car is just downstairs in, in, in the car park, as they call it, <laughs> inside the garage. And uh, so, and then they're like, okay, see you tomorrow at practice. So they would leave and we just looked at each other and said, so uh, you want to give that car a spin? Let's go check it out. So, you know, we went down, you know, it was, it was, it was very weird, man. Total mm. culture shock. Get on the road. You're all nervous. You're on the other side, you know, trying to get used to, you know, shifting the gears and, a little Fiat, like they have all these, the, the, the streets are a lot narrow, more narrow and windy in Europe. You know what I mean? Where everything's like wider and bigger over here. So the, yeah. the vehicles are the same. So a lot, other than Range Rovers, all the vehicles are small over there. You know what I mean? Man. So it, it's a big difference. That's, That's awesome. crazy. Rob, I'm yeah. tapped, bro. So what I, if you got to ask him some stuff, go ahead, man. No, I, I'm good. Like I, I, this was, this was fantastic. And I, uh, I just love Dude. having him on. He's such a great talker and I just love listening to you, buddy. I appreciate I'm playing tickle feet with you, you right now. <laughs> playing tummy sticks. No, I appreciate the patience you guys had. I'm sorry for the technical difficulties. You guys are awesome. And like, it's awesome to be able to talk about these things with fellow like-minded hockey guys right and yeah. like I, I really appreciate being on your show guys every well we've time. been up with a lot of amateurs on the show <laughs> <laughs> i'm just kidding i'm just kidding. You're the best buddy yeah man know, this, this is, is a good term right so yeah been no I mean, I mean we had some laughs we talked about some really serious stuff like it was a yeah. great mix guys yeah. i'm i'm and i'm pretty sure that you guys are going to see us in june so hey, man, I, we're going to probably so. come down and fucking check out the art thing there with Danny. Yeah, we, well, like well that, Danny's so. got his art exhibit um at um Jesus, uh bottom line that's sports June, bar June 16th, right? Which is right yeah, but that's crazy that you have all this information because I think it's 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 he's just kind of releasing all that now, so that's great, bro. Yeah, um, so I'm, I'm him and I talk here first. It. Yeah, um, so I'll definitely be there. I hope you guys are there and we definitely got to talk cuz I got to get you guys on my show as well. Yeah, bro. Awesome. We'll, we'll definitely talk. Yeah, man. Thank you. As always action packed interview with you all the time. <laughs> Sheriff always brings it all the time, but yeah, man, you are welcome on the show. Anytime. Like we shoot the shit with you guys all the time. We obviously, yes. we, we fucking love you guys. So anytime, bro, you're always welcome on the show. Okay. Yeah, dude. And we'll have a blast at that art show. man. Oh yeah. Don't, don't you worry about that. <laughs> I'm going to only remember half of it. I'm just saying, already calling it. It's going to get interesting. Drew's like, we're going to vlog everything too. So if you guys need any like footage or anything really? from that, we got you. Well, I just can't wait to put Rob in a headlock. Uh, you <laughs> really? Really? For every time somebody Give said him a that. couple shots. <laughs> oh yeah. I'll, I'll probably <laughs> drill him a couple times for you too. And if I had a dime for every time somebody said that, I might have 85 cents. <laughs> All right, awesome, Sean. Thank guys. you so much, bro. Really appreciate you coming on the show, buddy. Thanks I so much. I appreciate it, guys. Thank you so much. Take care. See you guys. And there he was, our boy, Sheriff Sean McMorrow. Never disappoints when he comes on the show with the boys, eh?
Bro, I could spend hours with that guy. Just talking. But I am going to fight him. He's not even going to see it. I'm going to fucking split his lip. And he's going to have another scar on his, what what, what do you keep saying? Uh, His pigment? Yeah. Uh, yeah, he, the one that he's got beside his eye, I'm going to put one right beside his mouth. <laughs> I can't wait to see him throw you in a headlock. Oh, I can't wait either. <laughs> so, yeah, so big thanks to Sean there coming on. He's always entertaining as usual. So, what a beauty. Yeah, we're going to be hanging out with those boys this summer. So, so we're going to the art. Yeah, we're going to go to the art, art thing. Yeah. The art, art yeah, show, for, right? yeah, yeah, buddy. Um, he wants to come with us. Okay, we'll see what, what we can do. So, Ladies Olympics Team Canada, they played a team. Who did they play the other night? They beat them like eleven one. Who was it? They played China the night before and won eight 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 seven or eight yeah. six. Yeah, eight, and then six like yeah, China. Then, like really, that's yeah. awesome. Like yeah. the, their program is coming around. Like oh that. yeah, oh yeah. And then they turn around the next night and they win eleven one. <laughs> yeah, they said fuck you. Guys. Um, like, was it Sarah Nurse got a hat trick right? I think one Nurse of our got, favorites. Yeah. Sarah Nurse, former guest on the show here. She got a hat trick. So good for you, Sarah. And a couple of them were like sniped. Like she <laughs> fucking was ripping the puck. So I was like, every time she every time she scored, my like mom would send me a text. Nurse just scored. I'm like, I know mom. I'm 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 like watching the game. She'd score again. My mom like, oh, she scored again. I'm like, I know, mom. I'm watching the game. Then she like got, she got the third one. My mom's like, all right, fuck it. Well, she got a hat trick. <laughs> but yeah, but she was she played a fantastic game, perfect game. So whatever. Okay. Tell her, yeah. Like I got lost in her eyes when we were interviewing. Yeah, she I has tell bright, you bright eyes. She yeah. said, <laughs> I was just like mesmerized by it, her eyes. It almost like. like green. Yeah, and they're like bright green. It's almost yeah. like she's staring a hole through you. They're so bright right. green. Yeah, yeah. She was cool too, man. She was cool to talk so to. So cool, so cool. Like hockey chicks are awesome. Yeah. Um, Jack Eichel is skating with the team, like full fledged skating with the team. He's in a contact shirt, so he's been cleared for contact. He's traveling with the team. He's practicing with the team every day. He's due to come back like any time. Any time when he comes back. And you haven't really heard much about Vegas this year, right? So I think when he comes back, oh boy, he's going to light a fire in that lineup. And that's because he's hungry right now. You think about it. He's oh, I'm a, not a big fan of Jack. I, I know, but think about it though. He's got a fresh start. He's with Vegas. He's fucking, he's going to do some damage. So we'll see what happens there. That lineup should be nice and scary. I'm, I'm more interested on uh, Evander Kane. Yeah. What he yeah and, and he's been fine so far. Yeah. He's, he's scoring. Yeah. He's, he's, he got hurt, eh? He got hurt. Yeah, he did. Um, a couple of things on the NHL, speaking of games and overseas and this and that. Um, so the NHL wants to do a World Cup of Hockey before the 2026 Winter Olympics. So they're going to do another World Cup of Hockey. So that's good news. My guess is the my I bet it will be 2024 or 25 probably when they do that. I would Why say. not do it every year? Because it takes like a year and a half just to plan it. Okay, just, but if you do it every year, it wouldn't take a year and a half. Or or you can go every two years. I don't know. Yeah, you could go every two, but they say because literally. If, if, you, if you go longer, then there, there's guys that, hmm. you know what I mean? Like four years. Yeah, you know, no, no, I know, but two. they're saying to literally plan it, start till the thing is over it takes a year and a half so that's probably why they can't do it every year I but i would i would like to see it I've, even every other year i would like to see it that'd be yeah. cool the world yeah sure. it's awesome it's awesome i love it the other thing too that's returning next season is the global series so the nhl is going to play games over in europe so they're going to hold them in switzerland germany czech republic and finland and what they do too is they usually send a few teams over there and they usually play a few games against teams from over there too and then they'll play each other. It's mm. usually it's usually how they do it. So that's pretty cool though. I like seeing them go over there and play games overseas. It expands the game. It gives them, you know, a chance overseas to see guys from over here and for the big league, you know, cuz let's face it, I, I the NHL is probably the best league in the world. So right, remember so. Uh, when Sean was talking about playing in uh, Belfast? Yeah. Like, why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you put a game there? Like, how awesome would know. that be? I don't. Yeah, they well, they could at some point. 
right. they're everywhere over there, just man. Saying. Just saying. Yeah, it just gives the game more exposure. I right. like it. You know what I mean? And that's how it should be. For sure. It's hockey, why? Because hockey's fucking awesome. That's why. Hockey is awesome. <laughs> um, so what is what's your uh since there wasn't really a whole lot going on in the league, we'll shoot the shit here. What's your plans today there? Well, I'm already lit, so it doesn't even matter. So you're not doing a whole lot. Rob will no, be at I home got, today. I got right another now. TV coming. Uh, yeah. I got to go pick up. Like, uh, you can't help me because uh, you got your hockey yeah. and shit. And uh, I have uh, Flutter coming over to pick up the 60-incher that I got from uh, Jamie McDermott mm-hmm. for a case of beer. And he <laughs> said, uh, Patty, his wife, said that she had to wait till the beer store opened. Well, the beer store is open now, Patty. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> Definitely is. So, yeah, I, I'm just, I, well, you're going to stop by. And, and I'm going to stop by. I'll, st- I'll, I'll stop by and set you up. Okay, yeah. don't worry. Until next week. Fuck, Rob, I'm going to hire you to do, do some shit for your fucking work or something. Right. Um All right. Until next week, Aunt Rob, we're signing off. We're out of here. Take care. Love y'all.